Hello students, welcome back. Uh, let us continue with the things what we have in the previous class. So we were talking about the sintry concept and we discussed uh, the two types of sintry, one is the solid phase sintry and the other is the liquid phase sintry. And we discussed the importance of the liquid phase sintry and uh, the steps involved in the liquid phase sintry. And of course we have a certain disadvantages also we discussed uh, with respect to the liquid phase sintry. So now let us move on to the modern sintering techniques. So we have uh, two different uh, modern sintering techniques. One is called conventional sintering process. Another one is called advanced sintering process. In conventional sintering process, the dense nanostructured ceramic materials are usually obtained by pressing and conventional sintering of nano powders using pressure assisted methods such as hot pressing, hot isostatic pressing is going to be isotactic pressing going to be taken place. That is what the conventional sintering process. In advanced sintering process show a great potential in ceramic processing overcomes the problem of grain growth. This is the most important thing that whenever we perform a sintering process, the problem of grain growth is going to be happening in each and every process. So this is one what we call it as microwave sintering. So in this case, so this is a microwave, uh, simple microwaves which are uh, used, uh, ovens which are microwaves used in microwave sintry. So here, microwave energy is a form of electromagnetic energy with a frequency range of 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Microwave heating is a process in which the materials coupled with the microwaves observe the electromagnetic energy volumetrically and transform it into So this is uh, the microwave sintering what we are having. This is the one advanced technique what we are having now. So basically, uh, this microwave uh, sintering will take place with the help of a microwave energy, which will be in the form of electromagnetic energy. And the frequency range of this electromagnetic wave uh, energy will ranges from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Okay. So, microwave heating is a process where the materials coupled with the microwaves, the materials what we suppose to sinter, they will go into couple with the microwaves and these materials will observe the electromagnetic energy volumetrically and then it will get converted. So, this is what uh, the microwave sintering will go into be taken place. So, advantage is reduced energy consumption, very rapid heating rates decrease the sintering temperatures and improve physical and mechanical properties. Very simple microwave ovens what we use at home for minimum laboratories so where we will go to heat the material to a certain temperature and to import certain uh, strength to the so one uh, uh, advanced technique what we are having. Second technique is uh, spark plasma sintering. Instead of uh, using an external heating source, a pulsed direct current is allowed to pass through the electrically conducting pressure dike and in appropriate cases also through the sample dye. Sample. Dye also acts as a heating source and the sample is heated from both outside and inside. So you can see here the plasma spark plasma sensory process. Okay. So here, what's happening, he, here instead of using an external heating source, the pulsed direct current, the pulsed DC current is allowed to pass through the electrically conducting pressure dye. So this is what we call it as the pressure dyes. Okay, the pressure dyes. Okay, so this is the vacuum changer, chamber, chamber, and in between we have a power. Okay, so this graphite dye. What we are having here, the punch graphite die and the punch. This is a die and this is a punch. Okay, and through which you will go into pass a pulsed DC current. And this pulsed DC current, it is electrically uh, conductor, and uh, this will go into act as a heat source. The die also acts as a heating source, and the sample is heated from both inside and outside. The outside and inside both the 
phosphate or the powder is heated. This is what we call it as the spot plasma centrifuge (SPS). So here the pressure die, pressure die will be taken as electrically conductive pressure die to which the pulse, the direct current is going to pass. Okay, and uh, die it acts as a heating source, and the sample is heated from both outside and inside. This is uh, what uh, the plasma, hot plasma sintering would be taken place. This is another one advanced material, uh, advanced uh, sintering process we are having. And the next advanced sintering process is high frequency induction heat sintering. See, in this process, uh, it is similar to hot pressing, uh, which is carried out uh, in a rapid time. But uh, heating is accomplished by the source of high frequency electricity to drive a large alternating current through the coil. This coil is also known as a watt coil. The passage of current through this coil generates a very high intensity, very intense and rapidly changing magnetic field in the space within the watt coil. So this is basically uh, works on the magnetic field system. So what's happened here is, so we are carrying out it on the uh, graphite die. Graphite die will be there, and uh, we will go into heat this graphite die uh, by the source of high frequency electricity. High frequency electricity to drive the large alternating current through the coil. So we have a coil here. Induction coil is here. Okay. So this is a magnetic. Uh, Powder is at powder compact, okay. So insulation and susceptor layer. This is insulation and susceptor layer, okay. And inside you can see here high temperature refractory layer. High temperature refractory layer. This is the chamber what we are having here. Okay, so what happens? So here uh, the high frequency electricity will be passed and alternating current will be passed through the coil. The coil is also a coil. The passage of current through the coil generates a very intense and rapidly changing magnetic field. As you pass through, pass an alternating current through the uh, induction coil or a coil. So the rapidly changing magnetic field will be generated and this will cause heat to get the Powder which is which is kept inside the chamber will get heated up. This is the basic uh, principle behind the high frequency induction heating system. In the sense, here we are getting a graphite die, and the heating is accomplished by the source of high frequency electricity to drain the large current, alternating current to the coil. So passage of current through this coil generates a very intense and rapidly changing magnetic field in the space within the work coil. So that will create the heat and that will go into heat uh, the powder compact which is being kept inside the chamber. This is what the third advanced method of engine. Okay. So first one is the microwave one, second one uh, uh, is hot class hot plasma sintering and third one is high frequency induction heat sintering. So the three advanced uh, uh, most uh, recent techniques what we are using it for the sintering. So this is what uh, the concept of sintering, so where uh, uh, solid state sintering, liquid state sintering, and uh, the what we call it as the modern sintering techniques. Okay. So now let us move on to the property evaluation. Property evaluation in the sense, so once the powder has been sintered, Okay, so we want to check the whether the component has achieved a required level of uh, density or whether it has achieved the required level of strength or not. So this can be ensured only by evaluating the property. So therefore, we will start discussing the properties that is physical and mechanical properties evaluation. Of course, different different. Uh, physical properties and mechanical properties are there. We will go into discuss it in uh, detail one by one. Let us take with the first one, density. This is a physical property. In general, 
the density achieved in sintered products is between 70 to 95 percent of the truly dense product volume, depending on the production technology in use and the type of application. Pores are of two types, interconnected and closed or isolated. In the sense, generally, uh, by photometrology technique, so we can obtain around 70 to 95 percent of uh, the density can be obtained. Okay, and of course, uh, if the porosity it is required, there are two types of pores. One is called interconnected, other one is called closed or isolated. Sodium means by interconnected means in that case the pores are connected with each other along the particle junction. So one junction to the other one junction, the pores are connected. The pores are consequently irregular unless the particles are initially spherical. Such pores are remain as low as per percent of total porosity. The later types of pores are pronounced when total porosity is less than 5%. They are often but not necessarily spherical. So if the particles are spherical in nature, okay, the pores are remain will remain as low as 5% of the total pores. So second type of pores, what we call it as closed pores, they are uh, pronounced to when total porosity is less than 5%, and they are often but not necessarily spherical. The sinter density determination is carried out following the process of ISO standard 2738. This is valid for both the dry products and for the products that have been impregnated with oil. In case pots have been impregnated, impregnated with the thermosetting polymers. The true density is obtained graphically. This shows the calculation of unknown density by determining the density of the pot examined by assuming a degree of impregnation equal to 0.8. As most impregnating resins have a density between 1 to 1.3, two straight lines have been drawn on the diagram delineating the two limits of the band intermediate points to be obtained by the impregnation. In the sense, the Standard uh, ISO standard 2738 process has been followed for determining the center uh, density. And uh, this standard is this process, uh, this method or this procedure is uh, valid for both the dry products and for the products that have been impregnated with oil. Okay, so there are some cases, the parts of which are uh, impregnated with the uh, thermosetting polymers. So we have to get the density of such products by graphically. Okay. So this allows the calculation of unknown density by determining the density of the pot examined and assuming the degree of impregnation equal to 0 0.8. Okay. So this is what uh, the graph we have having here. So density of uh, dry material, gram per cc, density of impregnated material, gram per cc. So whenever we find uh, any pot which are impregnated with a polymers, that is thermosetting polymers, so the true density can be obtained by this graphical. So this is the graph which we going to represent uh, the true density of the sintered products which are impregnated with the thermostatic thermosetting polymer. Okay. The density may be calculated by the oil impregnation method, the formula being D is equal to A capital A divided by B minus C gram per cc, C is centimeter cube, where A is the mass of the unimpregnated pot in air, B is the mass of the pot after impregnation with oil, and C is the mass of the impregnated pot in water. Either of the two procedures may be used for oil impregnation. Either you can use a graphical method or you can use this formula method for calculating the density. Either you can use graphical or formula. So this is the formula we are having D is equal to D corresponds to the density of oil impregnated from product which is equal to A capital A divided by capital B minus C. So we going to get it in gram per centimeter cube. Okay. So this is the formula where E is the mass of the impregnated pot in air, 
D is the mass of the pot after impregnation with the oil, and G is C is the mass of the impregnated pot, pot in water. So any of these methods can be used for finding out the density of the pot, which is impregnated. So here. <coughs> The procedure is the specimen is immersed for four hours minimum in oil. They have stable to universal at 830 degrees centigrade. This is 380 degrees centigrade held at temperature of 82 plus or minus 4 degrees centigrade and then cooled to the room temperature. The pressure over the specimen immersed in oil at room temperature is reduced to a maximum of 50 millimeter mercury pressure for 30 minutes. The specimen then remains immersed in oil at a Pressure for the amount of interconnected porosity can be calculated. So we have uh, another one uh, uh, formula for connecting, calculating the interconnected porosity, which is P is equal to B minus A divided by capital B minus C into S into R, where A is the mass of the lubricant free sample, B is the mass of the oil impregnated sample, C is the mass of the oil impregnated sample immersed in water. And S is a specific gravity of the impregnated at this temperature. All the masses are determined to the nearest point on the pot. So, another one now, this is what we use. Next comes the mechanical properties. So, mechanical properties is the Metal Powder Industry Federation of USA has adopted the concept of minimum strength values for powder metallurgy materials for use in structural applications. It may be noticed that powder metallurgy particles offers equivalent minimum tensile strength value over a wide range of materials. It is seen as an advantage of the process that equivalent strengths can be developed by varying chemical composition, particle character, density, and the position. Okay. So, in the sense, see the that is MPIM. The uh, Metal Powder Industry Federation (MPIF) responds to Metal Powder Industry Federation of USA. Uh, they have given certain uh, standard the minimum strength values of powder metallurgy materials, which can be used in uh, structural application. And uh, it may be noticed that the powder metallurgy process offers equivalent minimum tensile strength values over a wide range of materials. And also, it is an advantage of the process that equivalent strengths can be developed by varying chemical composition, particle character, density, and the processing phase. In a sense, the strength can be developed by changing the composition, chemical composition, particle character, density, and the processing phase. This is the, the what we discuss. The material may be specified as a basis for properties obtained in test samples. Made under similar conditions, okay. and but it is understood that the properties of the sintered parts may be identical to the test piece because of the shape effects. The test methods and instrumentations are used for similar to those of the rod products. The various national and international standards have been limited to certain that we just gave it up. Let us start with the first one: the hardness. Like density. The hardness value has great importance and the provide indication of the mechanical behavior of the sinter. So one thing what we discussed is the physical properties of the density. Later we started with the mechanical property of which hardness is one of the most important uh, mechanical properties that the sinter product is supposed to have and it will indicate the hardness indicates the mechanical behavior. The indentation hardness of sintered material are strongly affected by its density because of voids in the structure of the material and do not contribute to the support of an indenter. The indentation of porous material should be considered in apparent hardness. The ISO standard on apparent hardness recommends because as the reference method that allows vinyl on rockwell methods as hardness. In the sense, so we can have the three different methods of determining the the hardness of a given material. So we have a rockwell hardness and the hardness and the weakest hardness. So ISO standard and apparent hardness. So just like when you want to determine what is the hardness of the porous material. Okay. So generally, uh, 
The hardness is determined by the indentation technique. So as you already can carry it over for this hardness testing in the laboratory, the same thing will go in the trial. So you can have a mean hardness in the test by the uh, indentation technique. Mm -hmm. So here, the indentation on the porous material. So when you want to have uh, to determine the hardness of the porous material, as per the ISO standard, the apparent hardness recommend because as the reference method. Reference method, reference uh, hardness test is a because hardness test, but also Renan and Rockford method also can be used as an hardness. It forbids direct conversion from one hardness scale to another, though it is possible to compare one hardness scale with another, provided both tests have been done on the products concerned. There are practical shortcomings in the test currently specified. In Vickers and Brennan test, surface preparation is critical. The tests are low and require both visual judgment and use of conversion. Furthermore, automation is not necessary. On the other hand, the Rockwell hardness test usually uses heavy loads, 60 to 150 kg, which are less responsive to the metallurgical structure of the material than the density variation. In addition, the test is intensive to the most common hardness cases used in the standard method. A possible alternative is the superficial rockwell test using 15 kg. So generally, the rockwell hardness test uh, is brought with a new hard 60 to 150 kg. Uh, but uh, for this, the heavy loads, because the materials are little porous, so then uh, because of the variation in the density, the response will be very, very less. So in order, in addition also, so it is possible to have uh, uh, the test, Rockwell hardness test, what we call it as superficial Rockwell hardness test, and uh, the load will be around 15 kg. So this is what the recommends. Second one is the tensile strength. The tensile properties of sintered products are directly influenced by porosity. Due to the presence of porosity, the tensile properties are somewhat lower than that those of the hot materials of the same composition and structure. For sintered materials, machined test pieces are almost never used, and test pieces are invariably obtained by pressing and sintering. Figure illustrates the typical uh, uh, metal powder sintering for preparation. Test piece for tensile properties evaluation which in sintered materials scale should be taken with the storage before testing for. Okay, so here, so tensile strength, uh, tensile properties we can say, is uh, directly influenced with the porosity. So what happens as the outer metallurgy parts is, possess a certain porosity, Definitely, the tensile properties of uh, outer metallurgy parts are lower than that of the wrought materials, which are used of the same composition and structure. Generally, for sintered materials, we don't use uh, the machine test pieces. And uh, test pieces are invariably obtained by pressing and sintering. So, we have one uh, tensile test specimen. Uh, for uh, testing the properties of tensile strength. With sintered materials, care should be taken with their storage before testing because they are, their interconnected porosity may give rise to the internal corrosion. In the case of fully dense materials like powder metallurgy forged, the machine test pieces may be used. Porosity has a more pronounced effect on ductility than strength. A poor content of a few percent can be rather determined by ductility to de determine the detrimental to the ductility. However, production variables, particularly in sintering, also have a significant effect on ductility so that the ductility of the material in the materials of the same porosity but of different origins may differ. So this is what uh, the tensile strength. So this is the diagram of uh, MPIF. 
Metal, Metal Powder Industry Federation. This is a standard uh, pencil test specimen with the different dimensions they have given. So where we can uh, conduct uh, the pencil test for uh, the sintered products. So next comes the transfers or rupture strength or bending strength. So this test is applicable only to the materials of negligible ductility. The width and thickness of the specimen is directly measured and measured accurately. The specimens are then broken in the testing fixture shown in the figure. In this fixture, the specimen is supported by two hard metal or hardened steel rod, which is of 25.40 millimeter thickness. Other rod presses at the center of the specimen. The test is performed in a universal testing machine and breaking load is recorded. The modulus of rupture is calculated as well. So this is the formula for calculating the modulus of rupture. S is equal to 3 PL by 4 T square into W, whereas is the modulus of rupture in Newton per millimeter square. E is the breaking load in Newton, L is the distance between the supporting rods. P is the thickness of the specimen, W is the width of the specimen meter. At least five determinations should be made, and the result is expressed as arithmetic mean rounded up to the nearest strength. So, this is the diagram for uh, rupture strength or uh, bending strength, what we call it as. Okay, so we have uh, the specimen here has been supported by the two hardened steel, whose distance is 25.40. Okay, and you are going to apply the load exactly at the center. Okay, so then uh, you are going to note down the breaking load and S will be calculated. This is what one called as what the modulus of structure is calculated by using this one. Okay. Next comes fatigue properties. The influence of porosity is more important in fatigue tests than in other mechanical tests. The kind of test is used for tensile test after pressing and sintering as shown in the figure may also be used for reverse bend or tension compression fatigue tests. Fatigue tests are important after surface treatment, hardening, and nitrating of sintered steel. All such treatments raise the fatigue limits as in the four free material. Above the fatigue limit, micro cracks are initiated at force and infusion and are linked together to form a final strike. In the sense, how important the tensile properties, the fatigue properties are also very important. So, therefore, it is uh, the porosity will also influence the fatigue strength of the sintered product. So, we can use the same uh, kind of test piece what is shown previously for tensile tests. Uh, which can be used for uh, reverse bend or tension tension and uh, these uh, fatigue tests are very important uh, when the uh, components are subjected for surface treatment hardening and nitrating because all these treatments will uh, limits or rises the fatigue limit and above the fatigue limit the uh, micro cracks are initiated at the pores and the inclusions are linked to them Next comes the structural property correlation strength. So these are the three important tests. One is the hard, uh, sorry, uh, mechanical one is one is the hardness test. Second one is the tensile properties. Third one is the bending, and fourth one is the fitting. Next comes structure property correlation strength. So metallographic study of sintered product is essential to study the type and the morphology of pores, which affect the various properties. Metallographic preparation of such materials can lead to the changes in the specimen surface, which can cause erroneous interpretation of the microstructure. Some example of such changes are partial closing of pores by plastic deformation during bending. Then breakout of material around pores, closing of pores with grinding debris. Rounding of four edges. So here, structure porous property correlations study means the metallographic study. 
where uh, you can uh, understand the type and morphology of the pores. The pores porosity is the most important uh, proper, uh, thing in the photometallurgy technique. So this porosity will affect the various properties as we already discussed. And hence we need to understand the metallographic uh, once we need to study the microstructure of uh, this pores. So metallographic preparation changes the specimen surface which causes redness interpretation of the microstructure. So because of the partial closing of pores for plastic deformation during grinding, breakout of material around pores, closing of pores with grinding debris and rounding of pore beads. When you are preparing the specimen for metallographic examination, there may be a changes in the specimen surfaces and which leads to the erroneous interpretation of the microstructure. These are all the possible uh, first cases what you are going to get it. The preparation of specimens for micrographic specimens are described as follows. Sample preparation, an abrasive cut off wheel with the water as a coolant to be used for a substitute the purpose. Thorough rinsing with water must be carried out in order to remove any cutting debris. Specimen mounting can be done as usual practice. Sample preparation, first you had abrasive cut. Next you had to go for uh, grinding. So grinding will be done with the silicon uh, carbide paper of 220 kg size using water as a coolant or automatic grinding wheel, which will be running at a 300 RPM with a load of 96 and 300 Newton used for the grinding steps. After grinding operation, the specimens are ultrasonically cleaned in the alcohol. Or Next comes impregnation. I'll go fast for only four minutes after forming. Impregnation, the process is necessary to seal the open porosity of the specimen so that the abrasive water and etchants are not entrapped later on. If the specimen is not moisture free, bleeding out during the etching may occur. So, vacuum impregnation is carried out with the epoxy resin. It's a similar thing what we have done uh, preparation of specimen for metallographic uh, examination in the lab. And the regrinding, after impregnation, regrinding is carried out on 500. Uh, and 1000 grit silicon carbide fiber. Polishing operation generally carried out with a 61 micrometer uh, diamond polishing spray on the automatic wheel using here, different uh, loads. Okay. And a polishing cloth with a suspension of aluminum may be carried out in unetched condition, total porosity, addition like uh, manganese sulfide or impermeable. Etching. Etching is generally performed by immersion. This facilitates the study of homogeneity of alloying grain size and presence of different things. So in the sense, these are the same uh, procedure what we discussed for the preparation of specimen in your metal testing laboratory. So the preparation specimen should be prepared in that test. Next comes a different analysis of sintered components, quality control of the sintered products. The two these slides are there, we'll complete it. Sintered products often use to replace additional metals, or saving technical improvement or ideally both. In either case, it is necessary to quantify the service parameter in terms of physical, mechanical, and chemical properties. Okay, the detailed analysis of quality control that has been impregnated. Some factors which may be handicap the quality of sintered products may be testing and inspection procedures, which do not realistically reflect actual use situation. Arbitrary material substitution in the purchase of the manufacturing departments without adequate engineering evaluation. This is a very important in case of full material selection for complex photometallurgy part. Crash design revisions to incorporate uh, new features in existing designs with the uh, minimum cooling changes. Here, the prototype development can help sensibly in building up the confidence. Failure to apply the same evaluation methods to purchase the components or powders as are applied to the internally manufactured ones. Failure to anticipate uh, misapplication of products by the user, for example, in selection. Proper grade of cemented carbide for different cutting purpose. Okay. <clears throat> Too little consideration is given to avoid variations in the physical and intellectual abilities of the customers. Interpretation of the statistical quality control function as absolutely quality assurance rather than the risk for the action. And the last two things inadequate advice to the user of safety procedure related to the product. And last one is the photometallurgy process allows considerable cost variation if specific part requirements are not clear. The situation would consequently bring forth a considerable 
quality variations too, or widely different cost there will be various reasons such as division of tolerance, difference in manufacturing practices, introduction of supplementary processes such as uh, replacing etc. lack of any specific value. So this is what uh, the what we call it as the defect analysis in syndrome. Okay. So my dear students, I will just uh, complete this. This is the completion of the photometrology of part module 3. Okay. So only one thing is left it out, that is application. So that application, I will be giving it as an assignment for you people. So you can uh, complete the assignment. I will be um, posting the assignment by today evening. So please uh, try to write the assignment and submit it to me. Okay. So from next class onwards, I will be starting with a different module, either module 2 or module 4, I am going to start. Okay. So prepare. So the material already been posted. Okay. If you have any clarification, anything, you can contact me at any time. Okay. So we will be just discussing these things in the next class. I will be starting a new module in the next class. Next class.